Good morning to the Way family. It is so great to be in worship with you this morning, especially in this capacity as the preacher for today. My name is Galvin Mathis. For those of you all who don't know me, um, I am currently completing my Masters of Divinity at Union Theological Seminary. And I'm so excited that by around this time next year, I will be finished with that journey. What I love about Union Theological Seminary is that this is the place where theologians like James Cone and Dolores Williams produce their life-giving work of Black Liberation Theology and Womanist Theology. And that curiosity to grow and learn more about theology and seminary started here at the Way Christian Center. This is where I've done my most uh, deconstructing and constructing work. And I'm so proud to say that I've been a, a member and a member adjacent since I was 18 years old. For So that's about 11 years of being in community here. I'm so thankful for the leadership team and the opportunity to preach today. I want to send my love and shout out to Pastor Mike and Dr. Sharice McBride, to Pastor Tanisha, Pastor Donna, Minister Adrian, Minister Mike, and Minister Lauren, and to the entire The Way family. I love and appreciate your support and prayers throughout my time in seminary. And I'm so, again, glad to be in worship with you all today. So I'll be reading from the lectionary passage for today in Acts 4, 5 through 12, coming from the New Revised Standard Version. So the next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners, that's Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioning today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. And the word of the Lord is blessed. God, thank you so much for entrusting me with this word today. Thank you for the opportunity to share about what it means to live in the power of resurrection and to reclaim that resurrection power in our very bodies. I pray that this word is life-giving and it's challenging for us as we think about what this means for us in our day-to-day -day living. May this word stick to our bones, stick to our souls, and stick to our spirits, Lord God. Again, I thank you for this opportunity to preach today. I pray that you bless the hearers and doers of this word this morning. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this passage, we are hearing the aftermath of Peter and John healing a disabled man by the power of Jesus. The, Jesus, the man that was crucified by the Roman Empire and demonized by the religious leaders for upholding his mission that we can find in Luke 4, to bring good news to the poor, to set the prisoners and oppressed free, to forgive debts and bring restoration to the land and to all oppressed peoples. And these disciples find themselves 
under the same court system that pushed for their rabbi's execution. We come to the point where the religious leaders, the priests, the captain of the temple and Sadducees have a problem with this message of bodily resurrection. They did not believe in the resurrection of bodies so that they could not fathom living, living a resurrected life. They have a problem with this disabled beggar proclaiming joy. And I found this disbelief in resurrection very odd. I, I had to ask, what is the problem with the proclamation of bodily resurrection? And why did these religious leaders have a problem with this? You see, the temple authorities were completely fine with this disabled person being at the gate outside the temple. They were okay with him asking for change as long as it was outside the temple. But when the disciples in chapter 3 of Acts ascribe dignity to this man by stopping and acknowledging his existence, by proclaiming the power of Jesus, and by walking with him into the temple, there was a problem. During this time, the prevailing doctrine was that a disabled person became that way because of either their own sin or the sin of their parents. So for the disciples to ascribe dignity to this man, to bring him back into the worshiping community he was excluded from, and be given a message about resurrection of bodies was baffling and a problem. This man also goes against gender norms and dances joyfully outside the gate and into the temple. The religious leaders were definitely angry about this. And on top of that, we see the disciples in court telling them as the builders who refuse Jesus, the cornerstone. It, it, if you don't know this, the cornerstone is the most important part of a building and without it the building will crumble so there's they're telling them that as the builders who do not have the cornerstone of jesus that their building will crumble without this cornerstone and without this life-giving message about bodily resurrection their system of exclusion was being challenged and people started to reject some of their theological doctrine. We must be like the crowd who were amazed at Peter and John and analyze who these builders are that have rejected Jesus as the cornerstone. We must analyze how we ourselves might be participants as builders in excluding others. One of the ways in which we might be participants as these builders is in the way that we exclude disabled people and their bodies. <laughs> The, in reading the, the Bible and disability commentary and studying disabilities theology, I've learned that texts like these are interpreted in ways that harms and erases the disabled community, which leads to how they are treated on the streets during presentations or lectures where there aren't any image descriptions given and in church when we don't actively pursue accessibility for all. When we participate in this portion of exclusion, we are subscribing to a middle-class spirituality that when we see the disabled community as, as problems to be fixed rather than people created in the image of God. So we must interrogate this if we are to truly proclaim ourselves as reclaimers of resurrected living. And it is something that we just can't ignore within this text. 
as we are looking internally to examine if if we are builders and what does it look like to combat that, we also must look externally and identify who are these builders that are among us, that we must question their doctrine that is not good news, especially for those of us who want to reclaim resurrection in our bodies. We have religious leaders who proclaim that social justice isn't part of the Bible, completely ignoring Jesus' mission in Luke 4. We see progressives like Nancy Pelosi thanking George Floyd for dying. Like his only purpose was to die. We see progressives again thanking black women and pushing them to save the United States as if they are servants of liberal politics. Black bodies are, are only meant for sacrifices, it seems like in their eyes, and servitude, as if there is no resurrection for our community. We see conservatives who became so riled up about the blood and little Nas X's Nikes, but refused to talk about the blood in the sweatshops that built the Nike empire. They, they had something to say about Little Knox X giving Satan a lap dance while they're playing Satan's advocate, standing side by side with him, saying that the death of Micaiah Bryant was justified. They talk about the blood and the lap dance, but they refuse to talk about the deaths of Adam Toledo and Dante Wright and say that their deaths were justified. So as we are in multiple pandemics of racial terror, gender violence, homophobia, transphobia, climate change, and COVID-19, what does it look like for us to reclaim resurrection in our bodies? How do we reclaim resurrection on earth as it is in heaven when the builders have built systems against this gospel message? Well, one, we reclaim resurrection in our bodies by pivoting towards others. Yes, we reclaim resurrection in our bodies by pivoting towards others. So imagine the religious leaders walking by this disabled man daily in the story. Maybe they, they give a coin or two or they preach to him about repentance, but nobody looks at him as if he is a member of the community. And Peter and John come along. They stop and turn towards this man and look him in his eyes. This is something that they learned from Jesus who stopped so many times to be with individuals and to, to look at them and see them as a part of the community on their various journeys. For those of us who are followers of Jesus, we are called to be resurrected beings. So that means we are called to pivot towards various communities. One of the communities that comes to mind is that uh, is the community of black women and girls. We should be pivoting towards them and making sure we are saying their names. We speak the name of Micaiah Bryant in this space because this black girl should still be alive today. And we have to let black girls and women know that we believe them and stand with them. It is unfortunate that we have to keep reiterating that today. And I've seen so many men, especially uh, even some black men within our community, justifying Micaiah Bryant's death, people re-watching the video of her murder, playing it like it's a highlight reel on ESPN, doing a play-by-play -play and telling us that her death was justified. That is dehumanizing, not only for Micaiah Bryant, but for yourself as well. That is not living as a resurrected being. Some other communities we must be pivoting 
towards is the Asian community as we've seen a rise in Asian hate crimes from Atlanta and in San Francisco, especially because of the way that the virus and this pandemic was blamed on them and their entire community. We must stand with the Sikh communities, not only because of the Indianapolis shooting, but because of the growing xenophobia that is ever present here in the United States. We must pivot towards the transgender community, especially the black transgender community who often go unnamed like Tiana Alexander, Dominique Jackson, Jada Peterson, Dominique Blushes, Remy Fenno. We look at these various communities and we see dignity in them. We see the Imago Dei, that they were created in the image of God. And that is what it means to reclaim resurrection in our bodies. The next way that we reclaim resurrection in our bodies is by simply being in our bodies. We reclaim resurrection in our bodies by being in our bodies. We live in a system created by builders like the Sadducees who do not want to see you reclaim resurrection in your body. The disabled man that interacts with Peter and John is brought back into the community from being on the margins and excluded from the temples. He doesn't slowly enter the temple with piety after his healing, but he dances. He walks and leaps in a way that probably doesn't go with the gender norms for men. He rejects toxic masculinity that sees that and says that he must be stoic in his presentation. And he instead gives a beautiful praise to God and has a joyful reclamation of resurrection in his body because he is seen as worthy of being part of the community. So let's live out this resurrection in our bodies by taking naps when we are able to. By saying no to pushing ourselves to do those projects or homework assignments after 1 a.m. And I've enjoyed seeing these examples of living the resurrection life in your bodies here at The Way. Uh, some folks I want to highlight, I've seen Sister Candace and Brother Rucker skating, uh, I believe, in a park. I've seen Pastor Mike having the daddy-daughter's camping trip. Or, or Pastor T playing b-ball or attempting to play b-ball with JoJo. So these are all various ways of, of what it can look like to live in our bodies to reclaim resurrection and to actually live it out. And if you have not learned anything about this pandemic, we should know that this empire loves to see dead bodies, souls, and minds. It loves to keep us serving capitalism so that we don't live this resurrected life. So we must live it in our bodies in joyful and grace-filled ways that protest the ways of the builders. And we reclaim our resurrection by giving notice to the builders. We reclaim resurrection in our bodies by giving notice to the builders. So what does that mean to give notice to the builders? It means that we must be like Peter and John and accept the call to proclaim prophetically that without Jesus, the cornerstone, these systems that these builders have built will crumble. These systems of policing that can allow white murderers to have their day in court while shooting black children, women, and men on site must crumble. These systems of excluding queer and trans folks must crumble. We have to pray with our feet for abolition to these 
unjust systems and, and construct something new with the cornerstone who we call Jesus. These builders are going to continue to build. These so-called Christians, white supremacists, heteropatriarchal builders have to know that we do not subscribe to their way of being because they have rejected the cornerstone. So family, know that there is a cornerstone that desires for us to build our lives, both communally and individually, in ways that show we are resurrected beings. I want you to put in the chat, I want you to shout it out loud in the living room, I reclaim resurrection in my body today. I reclaim resurrection in my body today. I reclaim resurrection in the body of my community. I reclaim resurrection for the bodies of those on the margins. Let us leave from this service reflecting on how to live as reclaimers of the resurrection in our bodies. And as we let the builders know that they do not have the final say over our, our bodies, minds, and spirits, Let's make sure that we are also pivoting towards other communities. Let us show that we are resurrected beings in, in the way that we show up for other communities and other people during this time. So, so let's think about who are those people we are going to be pivoting towards this week? Who are the people we are going to be pivoting towards this week? As we reclaim resurrection in our bodies by being in our bodies, what are the ways we are going to be joyful? The ways that we are going to give ourselves grace during this week? Are you going to make sure you take a nap? Are you going to schedule a, a, a Zoom date or a happy hour with some friends? Let's think about those ways in which we are going to reclaim and live out resurrection in our bodies this week. And as we are doing that, we'll be serving notice to the builders that they do not have the final say over our bodies. But our cornerstone does. Jesus, who came to set the captives free, captives to capitalism, toxic masculinity, transphobia, the prison, industrial complex, Jesus. The chief cornerstone came to save the oppressed. That's liberation, Jesus. The chief cornerstone came to save us, to save all oppressed people, to, to forgive debt, to, to bring back alive the land in which we are standing on. That is the ways that we must think and live and have our being as we remember and think about what it means to live as resurrected beings. So let us remember the chief cornerstone that Jesus wants us to live and reclaim resurrection in our bodies today. So again, shout it out. I reclaim resurrection in my body. We reclaim resurrection in our bodies. I love you the way family. Go in peace.